The next French president will obviously face a crowded intray. But one of the issues within that intray is going to be relations with the United Kingdom. At the moment, of course, those relations are fraught. The combination of the row over fishing, the row over protocol and the row over AUKUS have meant that Franco-British relations are perhaps as strained as they have been for decades. Part of this is, to do with the, is, is due to the ongoing uncertainties of the Brexit process. The issue of fisheries is as yet unresolved, as is the issue of the protocol, and no one at this point can say with any degree of certainty whether either is going to be successfully resolved in the near future. If either of them isn't, of course, this leaves open the prospect of a further deterioration of relations and a possible slide towards trade sanctions by one side, quickly followed by retaliation from the other. More broadly, however, there seems to be an issue in the sense that the British government, whilst keen to talk about global Britain, is far less keen to talk about working with its European partners. The absence of mentions of key European states, and more particularly of the European Union itself, from documents pertaining to British foreign policy, has been very, very striking. The Indo-Pacific tilt, as AUKUS testifies to all too clearly, had as much to do with stealing a march over the French as it had to do with working with them in that crucial part of the world. Where will this go from here? It's very hard to say. On the one hand, most people have assumed up to this point that there's a political interest on the part of the Johnson government to stoke tension with Europeans. The simple logic here is that Boris Johnson in December 2019 put together what was essentially a Leave coalition. 82% of the people who voted for the Conservatives in that election were Leave supporters. And given that, and given the divisions within his electoral coalition over more traditional issues such as economic policy, it seemed to make sense that the government talked tough when it came to the European Union and that it fostered a degree of tension in its relationships with our European partners. On the other hand, politics here is changing. Just this week, there was a poll release that showed for the first time that more Leave voters disapprove of Boris Johnson than approve of him. There is also a sense that more and more people in the UK think that Brexit is being handled badly. And there is an open question as to whether how long our Prime Minister, who came to power on the slogan of getting Brexit done, can continue to keep Brexit going before his voter base start to think, hold on a second, isn't this something that should have been done and dusted by now? And of course, over the weekend, we saw rumours in the Sunday Times by the respected journalist Tim Shipman that in Number 10 Downing Street, there is real planning going on for a relaunch of the Franco-British relationship, for a close entente cordiale, a new treaty that would take cooperation further even than under the Lancaster House Treaty of 2010. Personally, I take such suggestions with a pinch of salt. I don't think relations between the two leaders or between the two states are at a point as yet where either is going to be willing to make that kind of bold initiative. But it is a fact, nonetheless, that France and the United Kingdom need to work together. Behind the scenes, of course, the UK is still supporting France in the Sahel. And I suspect that eventually it will be events that determine the course of this fundamental bilateral relationship. Imagine, for instance, another crisis on the scale of Libya. A crisis, in other words, that was slightly too small for the United States, yet slightly too big for the European Union. What choice will the French and British have under those circumstances but to work together? For the moment, however, and absent such a crisis, politics seems to be ruling the day. On the UK side, as I've said, the politics of leaving the European Union still continue to shape the UK government's attitude towards foreign policy. And there seems little doubt looked at from abroad that President Macron has decided that standing up to the British makes for good politics in the run-up to the general election. Perhaps things will be clearer after that French presidential election next year. My sense is it will take a while before the two countries can start repairing their relationship because it will take a while to, to deal with the real practical substantive issues that Brexit has thrown up. The one thing that seems clear to me, however, is that the sooner they manage to sit down and start talking together and working together again, the better it will be in terms of both of their foreign policy interests as a whole.